I could do the whole good with the Grammys last night, but I'll save that. I'll skip out on that. Let's do the good from the weekend. I saw this. Uh, I saw a lot of these videos circulating on social media. A bunch of Chiefs players getting send-offs from their neighbors as they were heading out to the airport yesterday. Uh, Rasheed Rice had a good one that went viral. Not sure if you saw that. As he's pulling out of his neighborhood, his cul-de-sac, you know, there's kids and families, and they got their signs like, Go Rasheed, go Chiefs, and that's, that's cool. Uh, Leo Chanel had a good one as well that I saw on social media. sounded like this. You know, that's that's really cool. That's uh, that's community right there. And I couldn't help but think about it. Like, imagine if they did that for, you know, us as we were going to the office every morning, right? Come on, John. Hit him with the one-liners today, big guy. Let's go. <laughs> well, they do. They do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just picturing John getting the treatment as he's pulling out of the driveway. <laughs> I'm always seeing one guy walking his dog. Good luck. Good luck, Mark. <laughs> I don't see anybody. I, I, <laughs> but, uh, I mean, that would just be great. Imagine any of us go to the office every morning getting that kind of treatment from the neighbors. They got homemade signs for you with the poster board. The kids are out in the driveway. Go get them at the office today, John. Knock them dead in that big meeting at 1030, buddy. <laughs> KCMO banners. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> Holding up their phones. I'm streaming on the app. Let's go. Oh, jeez. I was just – I was – Loving it, and then I thought, imagine if any of us, you know, hey, Bob, knock him out of the park in the uh, accounts payable meeting this morning. You're going to kill it today, big guy. Oh, it's good to be an NFL player. It's good to be an NFL player. I'll leave it at that, especially when you're on a team that's uh, looking to defend its Super Bowl. The bad coming out of the weekend, uh, Patrick Mahomes Sr., if you haven't seen, he got hit with a DWI. Um, and the problem here for him is that it is his uh, third of uh, recent memory. He had a second back in 2018. He pleaded guilty and was sentenced to 40 days in county jail at the time. He served those on weekends from February of 2019 through February of 2020. A uh, bond was set on this at $10,000 on Sunday afternoon. And uh, this was down in Smith County, Texas. So he was arrested by Tyler, Texas police Saturday night. Suspicion of driving while intoxicated third or more per the Smith County online records. And of course, this was eight days before Patrick is set to play in his fourth career Super Bowl against the 49ers. So uh, not a good scene, uh, not a good look. And I believe we have some audio from Patrick Mahomes Sr. after that uh, DWI. Oh, we're going for three, and then we're going to go for four, five, six, seven, and eight, and nine. You know, we're going to keep on playing the game, and that's what we do. Oh, sorry. Whoops, I think that's mixed up. There. Yeah, sorry. That's audio from after the AFC <laughs> Championship. My bad. But it just, you know, it kind of worked. Um, that's the bad from the weekend. Hopefully, of course, this has no impact on Patrick Mahomes. But listen, <laughs> it's not good. Like, I'm not saying this is going to have an impact on the game like, say, Andy Reid's son a couple of years back when that terrible situation took place a couple of days before the game, before they took on the Buccaneers. But certainly this doesn't help. Listen, if you haven't seen the Kelsey documentary, the Jason Kelsey documentary from last season on Amazon, it's very good. But, man, there is a lot of off-field drama and nonsense and BS you got to deal with If you're playing in a Super Bowl, you know, booking tickets, family, all these concerns that have nothing to do with the game. And now you got dad pop for a DWI, his third, by the way, um, eight days before the big game. So not a good situation there. The ugly out of the weekend. Well, the Senate bill to supposedly fix immigration. And I use that term very loosely dropped yesterday. Bipartisan agreement in the U.S. Senate. 
Apparently, it's dead on arrival in the House, and it should be. It's an abomination the more we learn about it. Mark Alford, of course, our Missouri congressman, one of our Missouri congressmen, put this up on his uh, social media page yesterday. And he shares here that, and this is text in the bill, just so you know, we're on the same page here. This is text in the bill. It allows this administration or any administration to effectively allow up to 5,000 inadmissible aliens, that's the text language here in the bill, per day into the country. But then if they exceed a seven-day average of 5,000 per day, they will then do things to secure the border. So 5,000 a day, inadmissible aliens, once again, that's the text in the, la- in the uh, document here, can come into the country effectively illegally. But then once you top 5,000, baby, then, then we're going to start taking this border seriously. That's border policy? Now, we all know that Joe could fix this yesterday. For him to sit there and say, I'm waiting on Congress, is a joke. Every other president, Obama, Trump, George W., And Clinton tried to limit this as best they could, some more than others. Joe has no interest. And now Congress is trying to figure out what to do with his hands tied behind his back. And yeah, they should do something. But for Joe to say he's waiting on Congress is an absolute lie. There's the good, the bad, and the ugly from the weekend. 